given that these significant figures, C.E. Smith, Salvador Lopez, were key to Castaneda formulating his work, should they be given credit in Castaneda's work? What are the implications of this composite ethnography style for ethnographic research in the future? Let me start um, by answering the second of those questions. What's the implications for composite ethnography in the future? I don't know that we will see much of that. Uh, I don't think we see a lot of that right now. Uh, but at the time, I think it was, um, it was a different time. Castaneda was writing, doing his research in the 60s. And his first book came out, uh, Teachings of Don Juan in 1968. Uh, it was just a very different time. That first book, and there's my copy. Um, I think some of you have read it now for class. It made me want to be an anthropologist. I read it in 68, and it changed my world. And uh, books that can change your world are important. And I'll, I'll never forget that. Over the years, uh, Castaneda's had a lot of detractors. And a lot of anthropologists today will say that it was all made up. He was a fake. Um, some of what he made up might have been, you know, some of what he did was made up, I assume, in telling his story. But I'll tell you what, though, in the first book, and probably in the first three books, there's a lot of truth. And uh, I only met Castaneda once, and I don't, I don't really remember a lot about him, other than he was very shy. But uh, I know a number of people that worked with him, and they vouch by him, and one of which is Lowell Bean. Just a few weeks ago, Lowell told me that uh, Castaneda was the real deal. So Castaneda's crime, I suppose, was that he probably took the personality of several different people to create this character, Don Juan. And I just, I don't know that, I can't think of any anthropologist doing that today successfully. Uh, your professor, uh, Gonzalez, may be aware of some. Uh, I think in a lot of ways, it just had to do with that time period. Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting literary tool, though. And some of, uh, some of Castaneda's uh, critics have said, if only he had said, there is no Don Juan. This is a person I made up by infusing and informing this character with the personalities of others. Uh, they would have been more accepting. But should Smitty and Salvador Lopez have been acknowledged or be acknowledged? Uh, I think so. They weren't. If you read uh, Castaneda's books, there's no mention of Salvador Lopez, nor is there any mention of Smitty. Now, in his first book, he thanks two anonymous people. And I've often wondered, could that be Smitty and Lowell, or maybe Lowell and uh, Salvador? I don't know why he didn't mention them. Uh, but they're not mentioned in there. But in the case of Salvador Lopez, Lopez was the last Cahuilla fire eater. He was a shaman. Uh, he knew a lot about Datura. In 1960, when Castaneda first showed up at UCLA, he took a class in California ethnology from Clem Meehan, uh, the archaeology professor who's now gone. And Meehan uh, sent his students out to do some California ethnography. And he said, if you actually come back and you've talked to a real California Indian, I'll give you an A. Well, according to Castaneda's wife at the time, he was married that year, just for a short period of time. Uh, his wife wrote this book. He didn't want her writing it. He tried to keep her from publishing it, uh, Margaret Runyon Castaneda. But she wrote a book about her life with Carlos. And she talks about uh, his taking the class from Clem Meehan, and she talks about him going out to Palm Springs. Now, this would have been January, February of 1960. Uh, Lowell Bean was already out there. Lowell had started working with the Cui in 1958, and he knew, he knew Carlos at school. They were in class together, or they were students together. So Carlos goes out to Palm Springs, and he meets a man, according to his wife in her book. She says, he came back, and uh, he said, I've met a man that I'm studying with. He had to write a paper for that class, and it was about the use of datura uh, by Native people. And I think he got most of the information, or maybe all of his information, from uh, Salvador Lopez, or maybe some from Salvador and some from Lowell Bean, or some from the museum at the uh, Palm Springs Desert Museum. They had a research library there uh, that had uh, some pretty good information in it at the time. And maybe he got the information from Smitty. Smitty knew a lot about Datura. Smitty had written his dissertation at Berkeley on medicinal plants of South America. 
and knew all about hallucinogenic plants and plants that shamans would use to cure, uh, including Datura. So somehow, though, Carlos went to Palm Springs and came back and wrote a paper about Datura. Now, according to Clem Meehan, Meehan told Carlos's wife, and she has it in her book, that when Carlos's first book uh, came out in 1968, he attributes to Don Juan almost word for word what he had written in his 1960 paper, what Carlos had written in the 1960 paper, a year before he met Don Juan. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that was the influence of Salvador Lopez telling Carlos about the use of Datura, and all of a sudden Don Juan, uh, who probably wasn't one individual, but is a composite of several people, uh, is being informed by the personality of Salvador Lopez. Um, I would like to find out more, and I've, I've gone about as far as I can, unfortunately, without having Carlos to ask, or Smitty to ask, or Salvador Lopez to ask. They're all gone. And, you know, I went down to Palm Springs recently to ask Lowell. Lowell's kind of getting up in age, and his, his memory isn't what it used to be, nor is mine. And uh, he remembers some of that, but it was a long time ago. But he does remember introducing Castaneda uh, the Salvador Lopez, and he thinks that Salvador, or he thinks that uh, Castaneda could have met other people there, because there were other people in the Cahuilla community that knew about Datura, but Salvador was, I think, was sort of the main person, and uh, yeah, I would like maybe someone in the future can better figure all this out, or maybe someday uh, that 1960 paper will show up. I can't find it, and I've asked friends that teach at UCLA, and uh, I've, I've looked elsewhere, but I haven't, I haven't looked everywhere. So maybe well, that'll show up and maybe there will be some clues in the paper. But Carlos was very, very, um, he kept things quiet and he was a very private person. And if you've read anything about his life, you'll know what I mean by that. Uh, if you look at the paper I wrote about Smitty, I have a lot of information about Carlos in there. And, uh, you know, by the end of his life, he, he essentially had a cult. Uh, and his followers, uh, upon his death, Carlos died of cancer. Uh, within days of his death, uh, these five female followers, followers of his all disappeared. And one was found later dead in the desert years later. They're all thought to have committed suicide. Uh, no one knows where the other four are. And uh, so Carlos uh, went through some very interesting things. He was a very exceptional person, very bright person. Uh, but he kept a lot of things to himself. And one of the things he probably kept to himself is who the heck was Don Juan? And I'm still kind of wondering. I think I've met at least three people who were part Don Juan. Um, but who knows?